all, Stacy here with Limelight AZ. Uh, this is my update video for week 37, 640 stings. We are back to stinging. I am so excited. Um, there are some changes. My elbows have really been giving me um, some trouble. Not enough to really prevent me from being able to use them. It's just a little achy and they feel weird. Um, I don't really know how to describe the way that they feel. I can't really say it's painful most of the time. Maybe if I bend them wrong or twist my arm wrong or something, but um, really it's it's more of a, it feels like they're, the muscles are loose. And I went through that actually for a while uh, before when I was stinging. So um, I think having such a large break you know, having like six week break and then only stinging for a week and then having like another three week break. It was, my body is just needing to kind of start back a few steps from where I was at. So I'm guessing at some point in the near future, my, my elbows, blah, I can't talk. My elbows will feel normal again. Um, knees started stiffening up prior to starting back to the bee venom um, a couple weeks ago and we're just not as uh, not having as much uh, mobility so um, again I'm hoping that that will start clearing up here pretty soon too so I mentioned last update that that or was it last update no last update I hadn't started stinging yet so I did post a video saying that the stings were itchy and and um were staying swollen more than they had previously and um but it was really just that one sting session now they're acting totally normal again um so i'm guessing it was just getting back into the routine that it was problematic i was supposed to have a doctor's appointment this past week but uh turns out she's out sick and I don't really want to see another another doctor. So um I'll be having an appointment. I'm supposed to have an appointment on Tuesday. So I should find out the results to my most recent thyroid test, iron test. Iron test I don't really expect to have changed much because it took a while for me to get the supplements that I really wanted to get um for for building my iron. Um and it was only just before uh, the testing that, that I started it. Um, but thyroid should be better. Um, and then I still don't know the results of the, uh, Babesia test that was done a while back. So I'll get that. And then also the results for the thyroid scan that was done. Sorry about the screen dimming and lighting. Um, I'm, it's pretty bright outside and my room has no lights on. So I think clouds come through and make the screen uh, brighten and and then they go away and then it darkens and so sorry about that. Um, what else? Let me think about that for a second. I did not plan for this one very well. Oh, uh, so my mom had to take her or had to call for her for an ambulance on Friday morning. Um, so she is doing okay. Uh, she'll be fine. But they're keeping her for a couple of days. Um, she's got s a couple of infections that are pretty bad. Um, that she just, w there was some confusion with, uh, not some confusion. Let me back up. She had had a doctor that she did not like and did not feel that the doctor took her seriously. That was in January, beginning of January, I believe. And, um, she had subsequently decided to go with the doctor that I see because I like her so well, but we couldn't, between ins needing to switch for her insurance and getting an appointment made for her, she didn't get in to see my doctor until around the middle of February. Um, and then, uh, my doctor got sick. So she did not have an opportunity to look at results for my mom um, prior to getting sick. Sorry, kids are apparently cackling. <laughs> um, anyway, so she did not look at my mom's results because she was out sick. And it's just, it's just too, too long. So she uh, 
ended up going to the hospital on Friday morning because she was so sick. And they decided to keep her for a couple of days. We expect her to come home tomorrow or the next day. Um, and she's responding well. She, she sounds chipper. Obviously, I can't go see her. Um, so having her uh, communicating with me over the phone is, is a good thing. Um, but she sounds like she's in high spirits. So that's good. Um, what else? Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like you're going to start seeing half my face here pretty soon. Um, let me think. Oh yeah, I remember. I was like, man, I feel like I'm missing something pretty big. And I was. So the bees, the bees are staying alive. This is huge. Um, as you know, we've been having issues with the bees, uh, staying alive and or staying around. We think that there's a handful of issues for why that's happened. Uh, we don't really know if it's any one thing or if it's a combination of things. So it could be anything from it's too cold outside to there's no pheromone stick to um, they can't find anything in the area to eat to drinking water from a nearby pool that maybe has a shock treatment. Um, we've run through a bunch of ideas um, trying to figure out if there was something that we could do about it. Well, we ended up, uh, a friend of mine ended up purchasing a, um, butterfly habitat for, um, for the bees. They need to be able to fly so that they can, um, have their, their elimination thing going on because they will die before they will, um, poop in their home. So, um... We have the butterfly habitat so they can do that. Well, now they're all staying outside of the house. They aren't hanging out inside the house. We really think that has something to do with not having the pheromone stick. So I've ordered a pheromone stick, and I'm hoping it'll show up here pretty quickly. Um, and then, uh, but they're alive. They're being fed honey and given water. Um, but they're alive. <laughs> I'm not happy for the bees because I feel like they're bees. They need to be outside flying around as much as they can. And um, so it makes me kind of sad that they don't have that. But I need to get better and I need the bees to stay alive. So right now, while it's kind of cold, um, we're keeping them in. And we're also waiting to get that pheromone stick. And then I think that we will try to allow them to, um, to have... Uh, free roaming stuff again stuff my brain isn't working right can you tell <laughs> um to allow them to free free roam um or free range which is what we were doing before we moved uh, but then since moving we just seem to be running into problems so that is the plan um my husband also intends on building an enclosure um a large enclosure that will have uh, plants in it and maybe try to have a hive inside the enclosure. Um, we say enclosure because they're, I mean, we live in a, in a fairly small, um, co uh, compact, I don't know the terminology that I should be using. We don't have a lot of land space. Um, it's pretty much our home on top of a little bit of land. And so there's lots of homes and children nearby and we don't want I know that there's beehives and stuff that, that hide out um, in very, various parts of the neighborhood, but um, when it comes to our bees, we need to make sure that people are not getting hurt. So um, Logan is intending on building some sort of enclosure that is quite large um, so that the bees are not getting out and able to roam the neighborhood, but are still getting plenty of food and, and water and... Um, Maybe we'll have some flowers and whatnot. So we'll see. Um, that's a plan, but we'll see. Um, so we're waiting for income tax to, to hit so that he can work on that. Um, but for now, we're going to continue using the habitat until we get the pheromone stick and, I mean, the butterfly habit, habitat until we get the butter. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just one of those days. Um, continue using the butterfly habitat. Until we get the pheromone stick. And it warms up a little bit more. Um, so that 
we don't feel like we're going to lose the bees again. Uh, our bee guy has been extraordinarily nice about it and has been trying to be as helpful as he can with giving tips. Um, so we're very, very appreciative, appreciative to him, um, for even for having to have us fill our bees so frequently. Uh, so that's a pretty big development that they are now alive. We're able to do the full session of stings this week makes me happy. Now we're back in the game. So hopefully, uh, I will start improving even more here pretty soon. Um, uh, I have for a few weeks woken up with more pain in my hands and my wrists and stuff. Um, I assume that that is just the resurfacing of the lime trying to come back. Um, but it's been a slow progression, one that I wasn't really anticipating. I thought that maybe it would be like one day I woke up and it was just really, really bad. I have had a few bad days, um, but I think it was more associated with food choices than food choices in combination with the Lyme than just the Lyme just blowing up in my system. Um, I kind of expected that big blow up thing because that's what happened before when Lyme first started hitting me. Um, it was just like one day I woke up and I just was, it was bad. So, um, thankfully I have not had that happen again and that we're not starting completely from scratch. I do anticipate that I will probably start not feeling very well because of the toxins, um, building up from the Lyme dying off. But, um, I'm okay with that. Uh, I, I, I want to get this out of my system as quickly as possible and taking that long break, although it was nice having the break away from the pain and stuff, it starting to see some of the stuff resurface with, um, things that hadn't been bothering me for a while. It's a little nerve wracking. So I think that's about it. I don't know why I feel so winded today. Um, I just do. So I want to let y'all go. Uh, anyways, have a good day.